as you've noticed, a lot of you have um, have struggled with this, and don't feel bad. Like when I was in year ten, I remember looking at this, and I was like, "What is this? This is like black magic." People come up with these numbers, and they just have no reason. They're just like, "Yeah, but it works." Like, but why? Okay. Now, mathematicians, whenever they notice a problem like this, knowing that there is an answer, right? Surely we can use something, we can take advantage of some knowledge that we have to make this process a little more straightforward, okay? So here's the process they came up with. Just give me a little space for a subheading. I'm not going to tell you what the subheading is yet because I believe in spoiler-free lessons, okay? I'm going to show you this new technique, okay? But we're going to have to pedal back a little bit. Um, remember, by the way, the reason why I'm learning this technique is for, well, I'm going to give you two reasons. The first reason you already know. But this pairing business, this thinking of a pair of numbers, can be quite hard. It's basically trial and error, which is not particularly efficient. Okay? But secondly, there are some problems where you literally cannot think of a pair of numbers. Like, it's impossible. Because the numbers that you're going to end up with either aren't whole numbers, they're not fractions, they're just weird, strange numbers. I'll show you one in a second. Okay? Here's an example of a question. You can write this down underneath your empty subheading. <laughs> This is a very, very simple question, okay? You'd think, it's not even one of these, um, one of these messy ones with a, a number out the front here. It's just, it's monic, okay? How hard can it be? The answer is, well, pretty hard, right? Because what do I want to do? I would usually think of a pair of numbers that adds up to six, and a pair of numbers that multiplies to seven, okay? Now, you just have a look at that for a second. How many numbers do you know that multiply to seven? I answer, 1 and 7. Those are the only ones, right? Because 7 is a prime number, right? So those are the only factors it has. But 1 and 7, at least last I checked, 1 and 7 do not add up to 6, okay? And you don't have any other options. You can think of fractions if you like. They won't help. So what am I going to do with this, okay? This question defies this method, which is why we learn new ones, okay? Now when we have a look at this question that I've just crafted out of thin air, the reason I picked this one out is because it's very similar to one you solved about 10 minutes ago. You have a look on the board, right? This question is almost identical to this question. Do you see that? And this one was one of the easier ones to solve, right? It wasn't hard, okay? So can I take what I know about this question and bring it over to this question, right? Let's just remember, in case you've forgotten already, how do we solve this guy? x squared plus 6x plus 9. You thought of a pair of numbers, and it was like, it was 3 and 3. It was the same number twice, okay? So therefore, what you notice, when I wrote this out and factorized 4, it was a bit different to the others. I could write this. Okay. So I actually want you to go back to where you wrote this question, like, go back a few lines, and I want you to put a big red box around this guy. This thing here, right? x squared plus 6x plus 9. It's important. When you factorize it, you end up with something squared. So we call this a perfect square. I know it doesn't look like a perfect square, like the numbers we usually associate with squares, like 25 and 64 and um, 100, etc. You're like, oh, I know what those are. Those are squares. Well, this is a square just the same. It's just it has algebra stuck in there. So I want to recognize these perfect squares and use them to my advantage. Here's how I'm going to do it. See this question, which was a bit prickly, which we didn't know what to do with it, okay? I can turn this question into that question. And once I've turned it into that question, it's really easy, okay? Watch, here's what I'm going to do. For starters, the, the difference between this question and that question is this 7. You see the 7 is not the number I want it to be, okay? So I'm just going to get the 7 out of the way, okay? I'm going to put him on the right-hand side. So he's tucked out of the way, and what I have left over here is like part of this question. It's like two-thirds of this question, right? I'm just missing a little bit. So how do I turn this question into that one? The difference between them is a plus 9. Do you see that? So I'm going to add 9 to this side. I've just made that question into that question. But it's an equation, right? You can't just go randomly adding numbers because you feel like it, right? If I add it to the left, I should also add it to the right. Are you following with me so far? So I added 9 to the left, and now I've added it to the right. Okay. Now, hold on a second. By doing this, I have turned 
this into a square, right? And you already know how it factorizes. It turns into this, right? Like you told me that 15 minutes ago, okay? What do I get on the right hand side? Like it's just numbers, right? It's just two. Okay, now this is, we're not there yet because I don't have a zero on the right hand side like I did for this one, okay? So I've got to do a little bit extra, but it's not hard, right? I've got this squared. How do I get rid of a square? You take the square root, right? So if I take the square root of the left hand side, I will take the square root of the right hand side. But watch out, I'm missing something. I'm missing something. If I give you a simpler question, like say this, x squared equals 25. Okay? Take the square root of the left, the left and that gives me x. When you take the square root of the right, that's 5, right? But it's not the only solution. Yeah, because it's a quadratic, just like all quadratics, all of these guys, they all end up with two solutions, don't they? Okay, And I'm expecting two here. Negative 5, you can square it, you still get 25. So I've got the same deal in here with this square root of 2, right? Plus, minus. So far, so good? All right. I only need to do one more thing to get x by itself, to get the solution. Get rid of the plus 3. I'm going to take away 3 from both sides. That leaves me with this. Okay, huh. now in a sense I'm finished. This is the solution. Like you know how we got here, there's two answers, and here, there's two answers. Here are my two answers. I've just sort of balled them up into one <coughs> line. Let me just write out the answers for you, and you should do the same. That plus or minus in there, it really means there's two numbers, right? There's the minus one, there's one solution, or there's the plus one. Now you can see why this kind of problem, despite how similar this looks to one that you solved very easily before, look at what we ended up with at the end, okay? These are the numbers that are going to do this, and you can't just think, oh yeah, I'll try root two or root three, or you're never gonna guess those, okay? Let's just quickly see, by the way, if I take these two numbers, minus three minus root two, minus three plus root two, okay? I should be expecting when I multiply them together, I'm sort of predicting what I should get. Let's just quickly check it out. <coughs> when you expand this guy, I know it looks a bit messy, but minus three times minus three, nine. The, the negatives cancel. Minus three times root two, <coughs> minus three root two. Watch out for those thirds. I've done the first one, now the second one. Minus root two times minus three. The two negatives cancel, plus 3 root 2, minus root 2 times positive root 2. That's just 2, right? Or minus 2. These guys just cancel. 9 minus 2 is 7, just like you <coughs> predicted, right? So this is a bit weird, these numbers out here. But this method is what we use to get those numbers. Everybody. So, um, <coughs> 8 plus 3, why can't I did. No, no, plus or minus root 2 minus root 2. Oh, you mean put the minus 3 over here? Yeah. I can. I can sort of operations. Um, minus 3 I could put over here. It would still be the same number. Minus 3 minus root 2 is the same as minus root 2 minus 3. That would be fine. It's just that it's a bit weird to put that out the front. I prefer to put it in the middle. But okay. you said negative okay. so like more that's true, but you're going to get a negative out the front either way. You either have this negative or you have that negative. So it doesn't matter which one. Okay. Now, just one last thing. Remember I asked you to leave me a, an empty subheading. Okay. The crucial line was this one that I highlighted in red, where I turned something that was not a square into something that is a square. Right? See, I was like missing a piece and then we added it in. So that's why this method, and some of you have met it before, is called completing the square. What you have on the left hand side isn't a square, but we rearrange it and twist and turn it so that it is, okay? So therefore, this new technique, we can use it for anything. In fact, I'm going to ask you to try using it just like we did for here. I'd like you to use it on this question here. You already know what the answers are, okay? So that's not what I'm worried about. I want to see if you can use this technique on a question that 
we don't need it for, but it will help us for in the future when we have questions that you have any other choice but to do them this way. Okay? So write out this question again, fresh as if you hadn't done it before. You do know what answers you're expecting because we've solved this already. But walk through these steps. I'll leave them there, right? You've got something over here that's not a perfect square. So you get rid of that number and then you complete the square, right? 